host and uh, the Pinal County Assessor here with the Major Domo, Joe Carrero here at the Carrero Compound. And Senior Joe is here today sitting in, uh, adding his wisdom and uh, ebullience uh, as needed, I'm sure. And uh, we have special guest today, Dr. Amy Fuller from the Florence Unified School District and her top sidekick, which we'll get to in a second, um, Mr. Chris Knutson. Knutson. There we go. See, i got to get it right because I'm from Minnesota and Knutson and Knutson. you got to be careful. You know, you get in trouble in Minnesota if you don't get that right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, a little bit of going on around the county like we always like to start out. Uh, Anthony Smith, our county board of supervisors member uh, in the western part of the county, is having a big government day from noon. I'm sorry, from 10 a.m. to noon at Maricopa Unified School District offices. So he's going to use the, the public facility there, and he's going to have all the LD11, and he's invited the sheriff and uh, the county attorney and me and the treasurer and a whole host of uh, notables, I guess, or unnotables. Well, who knows? Anyway, uh, I'm going to attend, so if you have pro uh, property tax questions, you want to get them answered, 10 to noon at the Maricopa Unified School District in Maricopa. So for our thousands upon thousands of listeners out there in Maricopa, city of Maricopa, I'm sure you'll all show up and jam jam up, jam the place with uh, <laughs> with questions and uh, some fun. Also, I'm a member of the Y board, and I, th Dr. Fuller, are you a member? On, are you on the board too? No, I know you're a member. member. I am a member. Okay, um, uh, and they are having a couple things coming up tomorrow. Big golf day at Johnson Ranch, and they've got two foursomes left. So if you haven't signed up and you're thinking about golfing and you'd like to donate to the Y, you're more than welcome. Uh, just call the Y in uh, at Johnson, or I should say Copper Basin. Uh, the number there, 480-882-2242, 480-882-2242. And just say you're interested in the golf outing. They have two spots left. That's Friday tomorrow. Starts at noon. They see, feed you lunch. And uh, uh, Sheriff Paul is going to be there, I think, presenting a check to the YMCA for whatever amount of money he can spare from his budget no i think it comes from the rico fund so it's like five or ten thousand dollars so it's substantial wow. it's fantastic so then you can play golf and then they have a little after after golfing get together with uh with all the golfers and uh, you know beer or two or whatever adult beverages might be served i'm sure you can have soda too and then coming up the end of the month the 27th at the y is the kids day and if you're interested in joining the y and getting your ki kid baby proof maybe you have a baby not baby proof but you want to have them swimming lessons and all that sort of thing and find out and it's a no uh fee day so you don't have to pay the entrance or the the startup fee or what initiation fee if you join that day that's the 27th from nine to noon at the copper basin ymca so Big support of the Y. I think it does a lot of good things for our kids here in this area, keeping them out of trouble mainly. If they're not in school, they can go there and, you know, uh, swim and do all kinds of things. And I know uh, Dr. Full and I run into each other on the exercise machines. She's going 15, 20 miles, and I'm doing, you know, maybe a half mile. But uh, I'm not as, you know, slim as she is either, so I guess I should start doing more time on the, on the treadmill. Let me check something really quick. Give me a – say something there. I think somebody hit her button on the front of the mic there. There's okay. a little button. Just turn it and give me a quick test. Yeah. One of you know one of our guests played a little trick on us there. One, two, three. Okay, maybe not. Go ahead and one more time. Sorry about that. That's Joe who was talking. Okay, Doug. There, oh, I heard some. Can you hear me now? What is? I Did don't you know. bomb that mic? I didn't, out I didn't make play me look it, bad I didn't, today. I didn't play it with the mic at Douglas. all. Douglas. Well, we could. Uh, it is. Hello. Oh, Hello. There we go. Hello. Can you hear me now? Hello. Barely. What is going on with that mic? I don't know. Well, right, I'm going to give you another. Well, I'm, a, I'm just talent here. I'm not the technical director. I have no idea. We're going to swing another mic over. If you're watching on TV, don't try this at home. This is a very highly technical move that we're attempting here to to uh, get this thing to work. And don't put the mic in front of my face, no matter what you do. No I've got it. The audience will be calling in saying, "I can't see Mr. Wolf." You know, it'll be just uh, chaos here on at the show. While we're working our technical magic, yeah, uh, Lincoln Day. On the four, uh, four thirteenth, uh, Lincoln's uh, Lincoln Day, the Republican Party does their fundraiser, and if you're interested in being at that, you can call. Uh, uh, you can go on to Facebook, the Santan, uh, or it's uh, the Lincoln Club. No, it's the Lincoln Day dinner on Facebook, and if you want to go to that, that's on the thirteenth, and the sheriff will be speaking, and I'll be the MC for that. Your host will be doing that, so I'll be doing a double show that week here on KQCK Live and on the show. So, without further ado, I want to welcome Dr. Fuller. 
and Chris Knutsen, who's been the fifth year as a superintendent. Uh, principal. Principal. Sorry, principal. you're the superintendent. Um, I'll get it right one of these times, but about the time of the end of the show is over, I'll have it right. And Dr. Fuller has lived in uh, the Florence Unified School District for 10 years. Correct. From where? Where were you before? We were in Mesa before that. Beautiful Mesa, okay. And when you say we, it's you and your husband? And our two kids. Then your children. And now, do you still have kids in school? They're not in school anymore and not on the Florence Unified. Vicky graduated from Florence High, actually, when Mr. Knudsen was there. And Ty is in the Navy. He oh. is in the nuclear engineering program in South Carolina. Wow. Nuclear engineer. Yes. So he went through the STEM program and got the science thing. And wow, that's fantastic. Correct. So. Yeah, the Navy's a great way to get higher education too, right? So Absolutely. everybody's out there listening. So, so ten years, and you were on the you were the board president. So you started out as a volunteer, or were you teaching and were on the board? Great question. Uh, when we moved to this area, I volunteered at Walker Butte first. That was the closest school in our area. Okay. And then, um, you know, I had complaints. So my husband said, "Amy, instead of complaining, why don't you do something about it?" So I did. I ran for the board and I became eventually the board president um, and we, we did a lot of changes in movement and things like that so that's how I started the whole thing. Okay fantastic so I mean so you, you, where did you get your teaching background where did you start in uh, ed your education for being an educator? Um, I have about 23 years of education experience this is my almost the 24th year and actually here in Arizona I started my student teaching in Guadalupe second grade and then I went ahead and um, became a high school teacher. Ten years later, I came back and taught at Mesa High, believe it or not. And I graduated from Mesa High, so what an honor it was for me to, to teach there. And actually, I would tell the kids literally that gum under the desk. That was yours. And they, <laughs> and they would think that I was not, you know, serious about it. It really was. Really, like, you, I used to sit there, you know. You're one of those that <laughs> for nervous, uh, yeah, I, a little bit nervous. I still do. I, I chew wow. gum all the time. Yeah, so. it's, it's red attention and so forth. Well, where did you do your uh, your studying? In, here in all in Arizona? Or? No, I have two master's degrees from, a, from UTSA, that's University of Texas at San Antonio. Mm. And my doctoral degree is from ASU. ASU. And so what I'm did a you do? Devil. Now, on, uh, and your doctoral degree. Did you, uh, do, in education, do you write a thesis or do you do something different? A education, administration, and supervision, and we do. We write, uh, yes, we do. And mine is over 200 pages. Um, and it took you, what, 10, 15 minutes to knock it out on the, uh, <laughs> your word processor? I wish. Wow. Yeah, I wish it took me a long time. Yeah. But um, I finished it and, you know, became a doctor. So. Yeah. Well, but congratulations I, I to that. Thank you. And humble beginnings? Did you Was your family wealthy and all that, or did you start out just like most middle-class yeah. Americans? Actually, humble <coughs> beginnings. I am the eighth child of eight children. Wow. Uh, I always tell that my uh, I was sang in Spanish, so my first language is Spanish. And um, my, I, I tell my kids, I, I was just not intelligent enough. I just thought the kids from Arizona only went to Arizona schools and kids from Utah went to Utah schools and, you know, that kind of thing. So I remember the first time I went to ASU and I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, how do they go from period to period? Because, you know, you see things through your own eyes Of course, your, your limited scope, but where you stand, you, that's what you see. Correct. And, and I just wanted to say we feel very lucky as parents out here to have you as a superintendent, so congratulations on that. Thank you, Thank you very, very much. Absolutely. And, and I want you to know that I became an educator because I had great role models, people who believed in me. They believed that I was something and someone. And um, I can tell you that I'm honored um, to be this because I didn't think so. I, I didn't think I was smart. I didn't think, I just thought that I was... Regular. Yeah, just regular, whatever regular, regular kid. means. And they, um, they believed in me. They thought that I could learn very fast and I could do all these things. So as a consequence, I went to college when I was 14. It was, you know, and I went to... It's fairly MCC. young, yeah, I'd say. Yeah. And then I, you know, I went to do a master's and they, I was interested in two different things. And my counselor said, well, why don't you do two? So I did because they said I couldn't. So I did that, and then I was talking to my teachers as a principal about continuing education, and then I thought, well, you know, I should probably do what I said. So next thing you know, I'm enrolled in a doctoral program and finished it in four years with the dissertation and everything else. So, You know, and I think it's important to our listeners to understand that this, this story, this dream, basically, is st not dead in America. Correct. You can still pull yourself up by the bootstraps with an education to get you beyond where you started in life if you're willing to do the work. Absolutely. Now, obviously, you had some natural ability, maybe more than most folks. You know, we're not all the same given brain power and all that. 
but it doesn't mean that people can be held back. So let's get Chris Knutson in here. Chris, how did you end up at Florence High School? Well, I started as an English teacher back in 91 uh, in Apache Junction, uh, moved to Mountain Point High School, got into administration in the Chandler Unified School District for 10 years, and had an opportunity to come out to Florence High School five years ago, and uh, it's been the the five best years of my career out at Florence High. We have awesome kids there. Fantastic. Now, you're a pretty good-sized fellow. Did, were you a sports person in high school and college, or no? Yeah, I wrestled at Iowa State. I was a heavyweight. Aha! Uh-huh. Chris Taylor times. Oh, no, way after that. I'm just kidding. That's when I was wrestling in college. Was, well, <laughs> right after Chris Taylor won the national championships about, I think, well, Gable was still coaching at Iowa U, so it was what, about two or three years after that when, when Chris, and Chris Taylor's passed on, by the way. Yeah. But uh, you wrestled heavyweight. Fanta- fantastic. Well, great teams. The Cyclones are fantastic. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, although the University of Minnesota's just doing okay. They're kicked our butt this year yeah they're they're doing well so do you coach wrestling now or if you're no, too I'm busy just, with administration yeah just administration yeah well fantastic well wrestlers you know make the best uh, talk show hosts and oh really print, superintendents yeah. principals yes exactly you're, right you're probably a 145 pounder no. <laughs> oh you're very kind uh no i wrestled about 167 in high school and i wrestled 190 in college so I was a little bit over my, but I never lost to a guy from Iowa. So there you go, a Dan Gable's kid I beat one time. So that was that's my claim to fame. Well, let's talk education. Um, I wanted to start out with just basically, you know, the since in 1984, there was a book published by Dr. Terrell Bell under the Reagan administration called A Nation at Risk, which was a clarion call. You were probably still a student, maybe in college, and you too. Um, uh, Chris, but I was just getting politically active, and he made the case that we're losing, you know, we're starting to lose uh, the, the excellence in education. Here we fast forward, it's 2000, almost 14 now, and I just want to get kind of get a sense of, you know, we we had the override vote and we lost that. We didn't, I voted for it and I was supported it. Have we lost the trust of the American people in the sense that we're doing what we need to do with our kids, or what, what's going on so that we're not only you know, we had that warning, and we, we spend money, but, you know, we still haven't reached a point where we've, we've gotten, I don't think people think excellence is still our goal. So would you address that just to start? Absolutely. And just so that, you know, excellence, it is, it's our goal. You know, um, this is where we're going, and we don't stop. We do not stop doing that. And I'm a case in point. You know, people believed in me, but they didn't just say, oh, you could do it, honey, go on and do it. They supported me. They helped me do that. And that's what we need to do with our children. It really does take a village to raise children. Um, We have many single parents, parents who are very busy, and we can't just say, well, you know, too bad that your parents cannot support you and just abandon the kids. So I think, you know, we're very good at academics. We can do the academics, but academics is not education. And people misunderstand academics is part of the education. I believe strongly that um, athletics, the arts, all of these things are part of, you were a wrestler, for example. You know, with that that experience, how would you know how to problem solve? How would you know how to team play? You know what I'm saying? No, not, uh, I'm not sure if I – it, it <laughs> rounded my experience, but I'll have to say my academics suffered because I couldn't eat. And I was always <laughs> hungry. I was thinking about food instead of – so that's just me personally, though. I understand what you're saying, a well-rounded individual, kind of the Greek mode. Right. The science corpus sans mensa, I think, is the, something from Latin. But So education is what? What is the – really, when it comes down to it, what really is education besides building a well-rounded individual? Education is the ability to apply that knowledge into real life. And, you know, when we talk about what, what do you want to do with the children, well, we want them to become productive citizens of the United States. I think that is our main goal. Productive is the key. I think we're all citizens of the United States. We live in this wonderful, great country, but what do we give to our country? Um, for example, one of the things that we do in our districts is iCivics. Sandra Day O'Connor has supported this tremendously. I, I strongly believe that this is part of the answer of education. Now, she was here in town, or she was she had some program yesterday with the schools, I think. We, we uh, did some filming for her, and okay. she will be coming back. But, you know, I believe that unless we understand our government, our e- economy, and all of these components, and then we understand our responsibility as citizens, Education doesn't do us any good. You know, we have to put it all together. So there's, in a way, there's educational theory about how do we learn. Right. 
and there's an educational applied education, which is how do we solve problems based on the, the theoretical and the, the, uh, the knowledge base that we have. Correct. And if you can learn to think, right, it, it, which I think should be the goal. Absolutely. Walk, walk out. You don't have to know, you know, uh, when the War of 1812 was fought necessarily, although the question kind of begs itself. Uh, but you have to be able to solve problems in your life because that's what life is, is uh, one problem after another. I, exactly. I, at least that's the way I see it when I... You, know, you get up in the morning, you got to put gas in your car. That's a problem, especially if you don't have the money to fill the <laughs> gas tank, right? right? So, so education should get you past that point. Now, are we are we are we achieving that? And let's let's throw this one to Chris for a second. Do you think uh, at Florence, you you're uh, you could say ninety percent of your seniors walk out the door being able to solve the problems that they're going to face in their day to day life? Yes. You know, uh, at Florence High School, uh, five years ago, we applied for the International Baccalaureate Program, and we are now an IB World School. So, um, you know, we're trying to, to prepare our high-end kids for the real world of, of moving on to whatever they want to do with a four-year university, whether it's uh, Harvard, whether it's ASU or uh, Barrett's Honors College, whatever. Uh, kids in the IB move to that level. We also want to spend a lot of uh, time preparing our kids that choose to go on a different path whether whether it's a uh, career and technical education field path um, we we have to set that program in place for for those kids as well and uh, you know uh, two years ago was the first year that we received an a label from the from the state and that's a result of our kids uh, who are now confident to uh, excel are stepping up to the plate and doing really cool things well one of the things that, that, that and I've looked at the you know I, I'm interested because as a conservative I think it's important education has to be a component of government no matter what because without an educated voter base you end up you know with well basically apathy and ignorance and that's that's the biggest threat to a, a republic um, in, in your dealings with the school with the kids uh, absent the parent involvement you know how do you attack that at Florence High School because it seems to me with two parents working and the stress in family life and so forth and divorce, yeah, uh, those sorts of things, you know, parents really set the tone. I, I'm going to guess that Dr. Fuller's parents and you probably yours said you will go to school and you will learn and you will listen to your teachers and don't come home with problems because you know problems because you know you get whacked here too. How how do you approach that when you really do have an absence of the support system around the kids? Well, you do you do wear many hats uh, throughout the day. Most of the best time that I have during the day is sitting in the cafeteria supervising students in the morning when they have breakfast and at lunch and then after school. And uh, I have to tell you that our kids, I challenge anybody to call me, come to my school, and I will show you what's going on at Florence High School and. We are most definitely not a nation at risk right now. So call me. Come. I'll, I'll tour you on this campus, and you're going to see we are preparing our kids uh, for the 21st century. We have a 21st century learning environment where every kid that shows up at Florence High School and Post of Butte, they have a laptop, and we, we're a one-to-one -one environment, and, and it's, it's extremely exciting what's going on at our school. Well, let me ask you this, then. It, it, if, since you make the assertion that you know we're, we're putting out the students that way, what percentage of our graduates from the Florence Unified go on to college? Actually, a large percentage do go. I don't know exactly what percentage. Well, I wish I would have had that question. I would have had it for well, you. Well, this is what answer. the purpose of the getting on the radio is to find something that you don't know, right? <laughs> I can tell you what the, the sad reality is they don't stay in college, though. Oh. So, the, the you know, we can say 50, 60 percent go, but it's that's not the point. It's the kids that stay in college. So that's a different problem? It's a different problem. And we have spoken to CAC, for example, and we, you know, one of the things that we said is we need to do a longitudinal study to see what happens to our students. Another thing that we said is, for example, uh, some of our students, I will call there and I said, I need to know how this person is doing. Well, with FERPA laws, they can't give me the answer. And I said, this isn't gossiping. You know, I've been with this kid for five, six years. I know what they do. You know, I can, I can shake them up for you and help. Anyways, um, and I motivate could, them. And motivate them exactly. But I, they, you know, I could give my kidney. They still wouldn't give me any information. You're, now, wait a second. You used an acronym, so if we try to keep it so the listeners understand. What FERPA? FERPA laws are. Which stands for? It stands for the family law, um, and this is a confidentiality. So once state or federal? It's federal. And so the big guys is the big guys. So you know, once you, um, oh, for example, all children are. I can talk to you about your child, 
and, and Mr. Joe about his child, but I couldn't talk to both of you about your children, you know, because it's confide confidential information. So once they leave our system, I really have no right to know how they're doing. Well, that, that kind of go contradicts the idea of a village raising children, Absolutely. right? Because here you are invested in them at some point in their lives intensely, really, Absolutely. very intimately at this high school, especially where, you know, we're all a mess of emotions and, you know, hormones and everything else. And then when you have a chance to really maybe, okay, they just need one more little sure. kick to finish, what's your uh, intuitive sense of why we're getting the dropout when they get to college? What's after they start and they don't finish? A lot of our kids, I think, um, they don't understand the rigor of college, and this is where Common Core comes in. Um, it is rigorous. Uh, the expectations are different. It's a lot bigger than high school. Um, also, you know, balancing life. Now, boys or girls, depending on who you are, come in, and, you know, finances and diet and all of these different things come in. You kind of are an adult, but your mind is really not ready to make all these decisions. In fact, we were talking about our daughters who are about the same age and in their college. freshman mm -hmm. in college. And, you well, know, they'll do fine. It's, oh, it's men who have the trouble, let's be honest. Oh, it's all of them. But balancing all of this. Well, but men, you know, we, I mean, the brain research shows that men don't, their brains don't mature until they're 25, give or take, and women around 18 to 19. I think it's an excuse, but yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, kidding. <laughs> well, it's a, it might be, some oh, biology true. may be it's destiny. True. I mean, I'm sure. not going to play in the NBA, for instance, you know. Um, but, yes, so, okay, so intuitively you think it's that they're pushed into adulthood and they don't have the skill set to, I'm an adult all of a sudden, here Correct. I am? Correct. Or the confidence. The confidence. Interesting point. You know, I mean, I, I think uh, we talk on here a lot about uh, education and how it's about taking that test and doing well on the test well quite honestly um, it's about building confidence in kids you know when kids you know and that's why you know dr. Fuller talked about the importance of the arts and the athletics because in those those arenas is where kids can also learn about being confident and as an individual in competition and research especially shows. in wrestling when it's just you and the other guy out there oh and, totally yeah for sure yeah. And, and research shows that if you the kids that are involved in their school and take ownership of their school the, the, that they do better academically as well because it transfers over. Well, they're part of a group too, Correct. which is, uh, you know, we're social animals, and all the, you know, the problems you have in school are usually the people who are out of the mainstream, as it were. Yes. You know, and we, the, you know, we've had some horrific examples of that. Just recently, Newton, Connecticut, yes. for example, oh. where and well, partly probably brain issues. I mean, some disease issues there, but. Um, uh, yes, if you're invested in your group, and how how do you have any programming at Florence High School that beyond the sports and the, the clubs and everything? Try to get those outsiders pulled in. Yeah, um, every year we've had uh, any town come in and uh, basically identify, try to identify all the various groups on campus, um, and we try and identify the leaders in those groups, and we bring them into a room and and. Uh, sit them all down and any town comes in and, and talks about diversity training and, and getting along with others and that was the first thing we did five years ago at Florence because our, our, our culture we, we were struggling mm -hmm. and uh, you know if you go to our web page and you look at at the front of our web page those kids on the top are the leaders of our school who have been selected to go on the top of our web page and on our letterhead and uh, every organization on campus is represented in that picture on our on our on the front of our web page now it, it's an interesting uh, aspect or perspective because uh, I went to a very small school in southern Minnesota there's only 54 kids in my class so everybody was in everything so there was no so much of the jocks versus the nerds versus the or any racial groups because it was we were all pretty much white bread southern Minnesota kids you know and the only big divergence was the Catholics and the Lutherans right yes. and I was a minority then so being a Lutheran but uh, my son and daughter went to a large school in San Diego and at lunchtime everybody had their their turf as it were on, on the campus you know the jocks here and you had you know and you had all the, the biker or not the bikers but the skaters and all that and this there was it's interesting how people self-select oh, yeah. And they self-selected also racially, so the Hispanic kids and the black kids and all that. Is that what you're trying to overcome with your any any town? Is that what you call it? Yeah, um, you come at, come to my campus at lunch. I, I want you to come and I want you to walk around with me, and you'll see. Um, that's not the way it is there. Um, because they, of this initiative, you think? Well, um, I think it's it's a myriad of things. I think kids love going to Florence High School, and they love being a part of it. And 
you know, uh, the, a couple of years ago, we went the whole year without a fight on that campus. I mean, you know, that's un- that's pretty unusual, especially it, with it, it is unusual. the tribal aspect of being young men and all that stuff, exactly. and you know, and getting exactly. wanting to get into scraps because we want to impress the girls. Um, but you and I probably never did that, right? Never. Never. Yeah. <laughs> Only once, and yeah. my, my dad was my high school principal. It didn't turn. Oh, out so well. you had no <laughs> chance. Yeah, <laughs> you, you had to behave. Yeah, I not only got it at school, but I got it at home. Well, and you know that was the culture back that was. 30, 40 years ago. Yep. There was there was corporal punishment in the schools. Which do we still have that in Arizona? It's illegal, but we don't use it. It's not used as a, a no. discipline method, but the, usually was the uh, high school or our gym teacher who. Uh, would hear from one of the like the one of the female math teachers that this kid's like me was acting up in class and the gym teacher would deal with it come gym class which was a different way of doing things but it was very effective i have to admit we're going to take a break and we'll be back with dr amy floor and chris knutson uh talking about florence unified school district and all things going on there and you're welcome to join us after the break 480-745-1033 if you have questions you'd like for either one of our guests we're glad to put them on so let's go to the break Are you ready to start taking control of your future and maximize your earning potential? Central Arizona College has smaller class sizes and personalized attention to help you compete in today's tough job market. CAC now serves Santan Valley and Queen Creek. The CAC Santan Center is located in the shops at Copper Basin on Hunt Highway behind Barrow's Pizza. Stop in and see how taking classes at CAC costs a fraction of a state university and your credits can transfer. So if you want to earn real money, you need to learn real skills at Central Arizona College. Enroll in classes today by calling 480-677-7825 or visit www.centralaz.edu or call 480-677-7825 or visit www.centralaz.edu. Central Arizona College, your college, your way. Santan Motorsports, located in Queen Creek, specializes in off-road ATVs, dirt bikes, UTVs, side-by-sides, street bikes, and provides performance work. Santan Motorsports is your local dealership for off-road parts and accessories. They provide and pride themselves on excellent customer service and a staff that understands all aspects of the off-road business. Come in and browse our dealership and find those parts and accessories you've been looking for. Check our website, SantanMotorsports.com, for monthly specials as well as used equipment. Santan Motorsports, your one-stop shop for sales, service, and knowledgeable staff. Located in Queen Creek on Power Road and Santan Boulevard. Or call 480-988-0580. Santan Motorsports. We're here for you. Are you having plumbing or septic problems? No worries. Call Cartwright's Queen Creek Plumbing and Septic Service. Been in the Valley since 1996, family owned and operated, proudly serving East Valley and surrounding areas. With a full range of services from drain cleaning, septic tank pumping, general maintenance and repairs, inspections for the sale of your home. They provide excellent and courteous service for all your plumbing and septic needs. We're not satisfied till you are satisfied. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Call today, Cartwrights, Queen Creek Plumbing and and septic service. Contact Denise at 480-987-8051. That's 480-987-8051. Our family pets are such a big part of our lives. That's why Kelly's Critter Clips of Queen Creek and Sun Lakes 
has been providing pet grooming services for over 10 years. Your dog's comfort is very important to us, so we take the time to treat your pet with care, love, and professional attention it deserves. We welcome any size and breed and feature shampoo and conditioning, styling, flea and tick dips, ear cleaning, nail trimming, and so many other services that will leave your pet looking good and smelling good and feeling great, all at an affordable price. Located in Queen Creek and Sun Lakes, call now for an appointment, 480-655-5066. Kelly's Critter Clips. And we're back with Dr. Amy Fuller and Chris Knutson, Florence High School uh, principal, and Dr. Fuller is our superintendent of Florence High School. And we've been talking about the things going on currently on campus and how we're dealing with today's education environment. And I was going to bring up John Dewey, because I figured if you did your PhD, you probably had to read about John Dewey. My conservative friends out there are very uh, suspicious of John Dewey, because he was a, a, a noted socialist and kind of set the philosophy of education in the United States. He was one of the major players, was he not? He was. Okay. Um, uh, and let's let's slide into Common Core, or Common Core, right? Common Core. Um, I let people know that you're going to be on today, and a lot of them push back at me and said, "Oh, this Common Core thing is Agenda 21. It's the UN. It's uh, federal control of schools." What's your response to that? Well, Common Core actually is to is college preparedness, and it's something that will benefit the kids tremendously. Um, Common Core is very different than the standards that we had in the past. The standards that we had in the past were very specific standards. Common Core is very general. The type of teaching that you do for Common Core not only teaches the student what to, like reading comprehension for example, it's a, it's a very low standard, but is how do you apply that to your life. Uh, it's, it's a lot different than what we were used to it. And I have specific examples of like reading in math. I can tell you that the math is very, very in-depth math. Uh, it's not only how do you solve this problem, but why? Um, how do you, you know, you have to write how you do it. Is there a graphic that you can come up with? Uh, it's totally different than what we are used to doing. Um, teachers need to teach conceptually. And it's easy to talk about conceptual teaching, but it's difficult to do. So the teacher becomes more of a facilitator, but the skills that the students are learning are to prepare them for college and career. And that's the goal of Common Core. Now, these standards were adopted already in Arizona. So you know, we so it's, it's already in the curriculum. It is already in the curriculum. So, so what's all the uproar about <laughs> right now? I mean, you read about it in the news and... It's a mandate. We have to do them. Okay. And so, so, and this was passed by the Arizona legislature. Correct. So, okay. So, I'm, what I'm trying to get my mind around because I haven't really looked into this issue is why uh, my friends, who I go to these meetings and talk to the Tea Party, I'll admit, uh, uh, they are seem to feel this is a, a negative thing, and I, I'm trying to get at the the nexus of that argument, and I really don't have my hands around it. So, maybe you could address why they think it is something harmful. I think maybe is the test, the parks test that they may think is harmful. Right now, there's a lot of controversy going on. Is it, is it mandated by the federal government? What is it like? Because the standards, the common core standards, were already adopted. It's a mandate. We have to do it. And when did this start? That in 2010. Okay, so it's been in place a couple of years. So we have some results uh, that, Chris, can you uh, shed some light on what's going on? What what happened at your school when this was put in place? Well, we're we're just trying to align the curriculum so that you know we're dealing with kind of uh do we do we push to the common core right now because our kids are still testing on aims or do we do we ease into it uh, um that's kind of what we're dealing with and quite honestly i'm not really worried about it um this year florence high was we were uh, recognized as a higher performing school um because uh nca they track three years growth um, in math and, and uh, reading and we received the award in, in math our, our, our aim scores uh, moved up to a 69 percent and and we're doing that in a, in a number of ways we have a, a program called uh, reteaching and rich so every two weeks we formative test our kids in english and math the kids that fail the test or the uh, or the quiz they then move in two weeks it's built into the day 30 minutes for reteaching you know, you're a former wrestler, you know. Some guys get the technique on the first time the coach shows them, and some guys, they'll never get it. Of you course. Know? Then you got to practice it over and over and over. And Well, this is one thing I've always wondered about education myself in general, uh, Dr. Fuller, is that 
you know, I, I was one of those people that loved sci- uh, doing history and, you know, anything to do with dealing with people. But I wasn't that great a math student. And they, you know, they didn't really, tr- I don't know if you do this now, but it would seem to me, even though I probably would have been embarrassed at the time if I would have been in a different track for math than some of my, because you like, as uh, Chris has pointed out, you do learn things at different rates depending on right. the way, you know, you're, you know, if you're a kinesthetic learner or, you know, all the, sure. the NLP stuff. So, uh, do we track it all that way, or is it is this part of uh, this, your system right now? We do, we do. Um, we one of the things that we need to know is what what does the kid learn. We call it DI, which is differentiated instruction. So the way you learn may be different than the way Joe learns and the way visual, Chris and I. right? Yeah, correct. And so that is one thing. Another thing is we try to benchmark them. So for example, when a student comes in, what is it that they know, and what is it that they don't know? Um, because what they don't know is actually more important for us, so we can start from there That's and your baseline. Then bring them up to whatever level they need to be. Um, it, same thing with the gifted children. You know, it's sometimes you forget about the very, very high kids. Sure. Who don't. We always keep them in mind because it's actually they're more difficult to, to get higher since they're already too high. But you still have to challenge those kids. And for, for example, in our schools, in our K-8s, they sometimes attend the high school for math or science or reading if they're that high. And it's just to give them that confidence that Chris was talking about, um, that they can do that type of, those type of classes. And they're very welcome to attend those, those courses. But, you know, we, we can't just give up because, you know, a person is lower in math or something. So we have this thing called Alex. And it's, um, it's a program that helps the child. It's kind of like a tutor, but it's specific to the child. And it helps the child, for example, if it's multiplication tables, and even if he's in ninth grade, if you don't know your multiplication tables. Sure, you can't go on from there, yeah. Yeah, you algebra makes that, no sense. Yes, you know. algebra, that uh, Arabic word that uh, everybody <laughs> wonders about, and they hear it, oh, algebra, yeah, you know. Uh, which, you know, I guess most people think, and I, I would have to admit, when I was a high school student, I thought, where am I ever going to use this? Sure. Uh, and for the most part, I haven't had to use it too much. You know, it doesn't come up or or, uh, or calculus, right? right? But it did t- teach you to think. Absolutely. And that's the thing. The process that you have to go through to solve those problems give you the, the foundation for other things that may come at you in life. That And that's... And of course, if you be, if you're going to science and all that, you have to be good at science and or the um, the mathematics side of it. I forgot to announce, and Joe reminded me that we're also broadcasting simulcasting in Costa Rica. Uh, on, do we have the same call sign down there, Joe, or is it something different? We do. It's KQCK Costa Rica. Okay, there you go. So for all our fans, expatriate Americans listening in Costa Rica, people think the world was going to end, so they put all their money in Costa Rica. Right here, you have uh, what's going on in the United States and. Uh, it's not so bad here, no matter what you might be thinking down right. there. Although, uh, who knows what will happen in the future. Joe's going to go down there and take a tour, actually, right, Joe? Absolutely. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're getting hotter. And i got a bit of put in a plug for our one of our sponsors because we are get, we're getting that hot time of year. And I know the cost of running the uh, schools, it goes up because the air conditioning yes. bill goes up. And for people here in Santan Valley, one of our sponsors is Radiant Barrier, which I put into my house last week. And I can tell you, folks, personal experience my garage is a lot cooler already every day because i have an eastern facing garage and the sun comes up and it doesn't go through the sky right away and i have to also throw one in we have another sponsor um anytime fitness on hunt highway uh, a great place i'm down 90 pounds as of yesterday since november Wow. so uh anytime fitness go check them out see lauren over there tell them you heard it on kqck and uh, she'll get you a great deal get you set up Sorry for jumping around, but I just I wanted to make sure we got those in there before the hour uh, finished. So Common Core is in place. It's it's uh, on on track. The testing has started. The testing has not started, ah. and this is part of why it's a little complicated, because as we are transferring to Common Core from the the other the regular standards, um, we are being tested on AIMS. So AIMS is the old standards basically. So we need to be careful because it's a balancing act. If we go too fast to Common Core, well, parks will not be there till maybe 2016, and I'm saying maybe because right now there's this battle going on. When you and say now, who's battling? I believe it's the legislature. They within themselves. Within themselves. And well, that's nothing new, I guess. You know, and for us, we just need an assessment 
that will test Common Core. And it doesn't really matter particularly for me which one it is, whether it's ACT or PARS or whatever. But now that the kids are learning these new um, standards, we need to assess them. We need to be able to test them. So that is something that eventually um, I hope the legislature can come up with and let us know what we're going to be doing. But for now, AIMS is what counts, and that's how we get our label letters and and we get measured by. Okay. And those are all public numbers, right? That Correct. They're out there. And the kids all know, right? They do, yeah. how yes. They're, how they're competing and with their peers and so forth? Correct. So um, as a district, where do we rank in the county, Florence? We are B. We're a B district. Which, is there any A districts in our county? Mm, I don't think so. I, I'm not aware of any either. Okay. So are we the only B? I don't know. I just know that you know Sorry. it's it's one of those. It's I not bad. Maybe it was on the the uh, some of the stuff I printed here, but maybe not. I thought uh, we had some uh, printouts on uh, the B's we and the A's. You a yeah, I know that we were the Calvary. only A high school uh, last year in Pinal County. Oh, okay, hey, fantastic. And we missed it by a few. Some of our this B's year we that missed we it have. by four points. Yes. And this is available on the website. It is. That's correct. Uh, yes. Probably can't see it at home, uh, but it's Florence Unified School District. It's FUSD dot org. Correct. And you can get all the breakdowns of operational efficiencies, student achievement, teacher measures, financial assessment, so forth, uh, if you're interested in finding out where your money is going to education. So so that's going on at the, with the legislature. In fact, I'm going to have Adam Quasman on and a couple, and, and maybe Frank Pratt come on and maybe call in next week when Jill Broussard is on, our guest next week, Jill Broussard, the superintendent of schools, and we'll see if uh, for the county. And we'll see, um, you know, what the, where what the, where they are in that process. So, let's jump ahead to um, the goals for the district. Do you set five-year goals, one-year goals? How do you actually set the the course for the district, Dr. Fuller? Well, we do all of it. We do, you know, what goals do we want to accomplish next year, and then five-year goals and ten-year goals. And those are, you know, it's kind of always different because in the past, we past where we had a budget that was not movable as much as it is now um, you could predict those things but right now one of our goals for example is safety all of the things that are going on we want to be sure that every school is safe and how do you define that we have a very specific plan at every school and the entire district and we are continuing now the sheriff is with us we have a meeting on the 24th for example at post butte the sheriff paul Sheriff Paul has been extremely helpful to us. Sure. And uh, together, we are actually tightening up our security system. We're trying to find out for, at every school where the exits and the entrances are, where, you know, and, and we, we go to their expertise. This is what they do for a living. Sure. So we go to them and say, okay, well, what else do we need to do? How do we act? You know, what, what do we need to do in case? And there are many emergencies that could happen. It's not just the well, it's a little, shooter. It's right. It's a little community. Thing. So anything that could happen in the large community could happen on a campus. There's no question. Correct. Right. And you do, you know, bad things do happen, and there are evil people out there. Believe it or not, folks, there are evil people out there. So, uh, back. Well, let's 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 switch over the safety thing for a minute. There's been a lot of talk since Newton and all the different shootings that have happened. Let's arm some principals or arm some uh, have armed guards. Is there a, f uh, a, f a policies that's been developed for Fl Florence Unified on arming anybody in this on the school? No, not, I, I don't think that teachers and guns, uh, kids and guns really mix well together. I'm not against having SROs, for example, people who are trained. An SRO is a? Is a school resource officer. Okay, so somebody who's maybe gone through police training? or Correct, okay. correct. And I'm totally for that because they have been trained how to use the guns. Um, it's a preventive measure. I'm very supportive of that type of thing. Us being trained to do that it's, would not be my favorite thing to see but I'm not against it I'm very open-minded I talked to the sheriff and I said look sign me up for whatever training you're doing this summer but I want you to know that you know we would have to do psychological evaluations on teachers and everybody else before I can give them a gun uh, it's not a good idea but you maybe know, huh? do I know what the Chris what give us is. your two cents you know uh, after Newtown I was I have a couple of teachers on campus and I, I talked to them about it who one was a uh, former uh, uh, Air Force, and one was a former MP in the uh, in the Army, and and uh, I I got their perspective on it, and you know they they were trained uh, to handle a gun. Uh, is it something that I think we should do? Um, I don't know. Well, I, what did they think? They would have no problem with it. Yeah, because you know? they were trained. They figured, oh, well, they're comfortable with it. Yeah, just like with an SRO, you know, it's it's normal for them to to pack a gun on their hip, and sure, it's, it's not really a big deal. Um, 
Well, the biggest thing is, I think, is, and uh, we do have questions pouring in from our audience. We'll get to them in a second, as Joe's reminded me, is that, you know, the, the guy in, uh, in Aurora, Colorado, uh, he specifically had, there were 13 theaters within 10 miles of his home, and he specifically chose one, because Colorado has a concealed carry law, that said no concealed carry in this theater. And that's what a lot of people don't know. He knew where he was going, where he would not, some people wouldn't be able to shoot back. And it's an unfortunate thing we have people like that in society, but it is reality. And so I'm interested, yeah, I'm, uh, that's an interesting thing. I don't think we should necessarily force it. I know Dr. Um, Fuller, that Jill Broussard is kind of like, eh, I don't think so. She does, she's she's uh, leaning the other way for the county at the county schools, and we'll ask her next week about that. So let's go to a question from our audience. I know we've been talking a lot. we got to give our audience a chance. Cynthia from Copper Basin called in and has three children in, in Coolidge uh, Unified School District, and we're not here to throw down other districts or anything like that, but I think this is a very good question. Um, she heard that Florence had a claim to fame with their bullying uh, system and process, that it's really a fight-free environment in the schools, um, in the Florence Unified. And she says, how can that be possible when Coolidge is so close and her children see fights every single day? With Coolidge High School. I mean, you know, that's not trying to report. throw another district down, but that, that seems like a let's, great question. Uh, yeah, let's put it out there. Well, I can t- I really cannot answer for Coolidge, but I can tell you that at Florence Unified, um, we are doing everything we can. Obviously, you know, we can control every child and every situation, but I can tell you that we are piloting programs that are, anti- that are anti-bullying, and we have posters with, you know, this anti-bullying thing. We have one of the toughest policies on anti-bullying harassment in, in the state. It, that's Florence Unified, and we do not tolerate that. Now, do we have a fight once in a while? We do. Sure. I, can, I, can, I can tell you as a parent out here, and I had to make a very tough decision and take my children on a Florence Unified School District and put them into Coolidge because of my children going to separate districts because one went to high school, one went to junior high. So we thought, you know, it would be within walking distance or a bus. And, man, I'll tell you what, what a difference. I'm very, very sad I made the decision, and I'm going to talk to Dr. Fuller after the show about moving back to that district even with eight weeks left because my daughter told me and, and I, I'm sorry Coolidge I'm just being honest my daughter told me straight up she's man I, I you know I'm afraid I'm afraid every day at school okay principal, and that's principal Chris you know that uh, the day that I took the job at Florence Dr. Nine was bringing me over to the high school and our, our culture was broken back then and uh, academics were not the focus of our school and and it, it wasn't a very safe face place there was a fight that went on for an hour and a half that day um, he, and and uh, that that was the culture then it's about building a culture in a school and and uh, you have to build culture if you build a good culture in your school kids will want to be in your school and they'll want you know that they, they'll take pride in it and you know uh, that that's the way it is at my school now and uh, I'm Plus, they're all afraid of you because you're six, six, and you know. Well, it, it is about visibility. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kids want to know where the line is. They yeah. want to know if I step across that line, what's going to happen. To There's me. a consequence to the behavior. Exactly, and, and if if nobody's fair, putting consequences out there. If yeah. you're fair, firm, and consistent, kids will live up to what your expectations are. But it does make a difference if there's someone you know who has an intimidating physical presence. Let's be guys. Kids, fifteen year old, they think they can punch anybody out. You know, that's kind of they watch the. It's true. You know, I used to be that way. I know, and I know what my kids were like. You know, and they had to be put in their place. So, please, Doctor Ford. I can tell you that Mr. Knudsen is very kind, though. I'm not he, saying he's not. I'm just saying you know, you know, he connects with the kids in a different way. It's not intimidation and fear. It's I'm, more and, like, and I wasn't implying that. I was just so saying. So I just wanted you to know yeah. that this is one of the reasons why you know I I chose him to be my right hand is because he connects. For me, you have to respect the kids. It's, you have to. It's a must. If mm-hmm. if you don't do that, then you're in the wrong business. And same thing with the teachers. They don't come second or third or last. In our district, teachers also come first. And uh, just like the kids. I was at Copper Basin yesterday, almost all day. We had half a day yesterday, and we were talking about iCivics the entire day they were filming this. This is part of the culture. You know, we're talking about responsibility, and it's self-discipline. Now, do, are there times that I'm upset and I want to say something? Yes. But I got to discipline myself and say, no, you know, this, this is not proper. I shouldn't say this to this person. And that's what we're trying to teach the children, basically, is you may not agree or like someone or something. You don't have to say it. Now, it takes time. Let right? me just ask uh, on the other side of the coin really quick, just to be fair, because I do have one question that, that I'm very curious about. I know a lot of other people are, too. 
um, with Post and Butte being the high school for Florence out here, at, at, you know, at least in, in our area, how how does it work with the, you know, with the amount of students that you have at Post and Butte versus the amount at, you know, at, at the opposing school in the same area? How does that work for for the bullying and and for just for kids getting attention? Does that does it suffer at all because of the amount of students at Post and Butte or no? Well, it shouldn't. It shouldn't suffer. I think it's leadership, and we are bringing a new leader, um, Tim Richards. Dr. Gotcha. Tim Richard is his name. Uh, we have been planning the, the entire. Principal. Yes, and actually, He's, I was sorry. Say that again. the hand holding principal. I'm okay. sure you guys heard about that at Westwood this year. Actually, I didn't. Uh, let's put it out in the air. Tell us about it. Well, I, uh, he had two kids get in a fight, and he gave them an alternative to out-of-school suspension for nine days, and they chose it to hand, hold hands in the courtyard. I'm sure it made national wow. news. You knew about this, right? I missed this one. I'm sorry. I missed <laughs> yeah, this story. Yeah. Well, he's coming to post it. He won't be having kids hold hands in the courtyard, but uh, it was he, he's, a, he's a reformer. That's a great right? way to do That's it because I know in the military, if two guys get in a fight, they make them wash windows and one guy on each side of the window. Yeah, it's all a day. Idea. So we have to look at each other all day, we're and so we're going to force you to tolerate each other. That, well, in a way, yeah, you have to learn to get along, or you yes. get you get out. One, one, at least in the military and in schools, you have to stay there. But it does give them, and that's a great idea. Right. It's called respect. You know, you don't have to agree or like someone, but you should respect them, and that's what we want. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fantastic. So we do have a we do have a question out there oh. from a chatter, real quick. If we could jump that in, sure. Um, where is the track record for the Common Core? Do you know who um, the money promoters are? I have no idea who's behind it financially, if there is someone. Well, it's it's a big financial undertaking because technology is embedded in the curriculum, and this test is supposed to be taken online. Well, quite honestly, most districts aren't as far ahead technology-wise as we are. If, oh, so if our kids have to take it on, uh, it's not a big issue because every kid at the high school has a laptop, and we have eight computers you're set to do it. in each classroom at the elementary. Well, one thing that you know you talk to parents, and, and it, is, it seems like uh, – not too long ago, it seemed that uh, President Bush put in No Child Left Behind. He and Ted Kennedy worked out this plan. And this was supposed to be, quote, unquote, the solution. And I think people in, in the public who are not close, they don't have a kids in school, perhaps they're past that age, they kind of look at it and say, okay, it's the next fad. You know, why does it seem like there's always something new and improved that's going to change things? And why can't we go back to the old and that were the workable? So, could you respond to that? The uh, the the prog I shouldn't say progress, or I should say the progression more of all the different ideas. No child left behind had good intentions, and the intentions were let's uh, be responsible and accountable for every single child. Part of the problem with that was that it's impossible. All children are different, you know, and you talked about that. You know, you came from a family that was responsible. You were expected to do well, and if you didn't, you know, I heard it from my parents and my grandmother and everyone else, right. yes. And I have parents right now yelling at me saying, you know, what are you doing? And, are you, and, and in all types of languages, including bad language, and they're saying to me, aren't you used to that? And the answer is no, ma'am. This is an educational entity. We don't speak like that here. And again, it's changing that. So when you have you know children who come from this background, it's going to be different. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's going to be a lot different to educate them than to educate children that come from people like you. Well, I think one of the things changed, and this is, again, in my life history, I'm, I'm referring to that because that's where I come from, right, is that we had that, that the, the, the village thing was that if you got in trouble in school, because it was a small school, small town, everybody knew. You know, I mean, because the teachers went and talked to the to the merchants and every, and it just got around. And the football coach knew, and the wrestling coach knew. So there was that outside pressure to behave sure. and conform, and not necessarily I shouldn't use the word conform, but just you know, behave yourself. Um, and the, and you get into a larger school setting like Post and Butte's pretty good size, and you don't, you know, it's hard to have that community or group thing unless thing unless you can in, inculcate it within the group of the students. Because they well, don't. If the kids buy in. To yeah, the, the kid. That's to, it. To the mission. You know, I was at Chandler High where we had thirty three hundred. There you go. And when when I came down to Florence, you know, we basically blanketed what we did at Chandler, and it, it, you can do it with thirty three hundred. Yeah. You know, every kid. Uh, you know, you talked about we talked about school safety. Every kid has a right to be safe in school, and you have to put uh, things in place. Um, and if the kids trust you, they will come to you and say. I'm being harassed by Johnny. And it's really easy at our school because I get emails all the time, all the time from kids. I'm being harassed by so-and-so. 
and we we address it. Yeah. You know, we we do uh, silent witness reward. Anybody has drugs or a knife on them, they shoot me an email. A fifty dollar check gets mailed out of a, out of a gift fund to those individuals if if the kid is uh, is caught with those dangerous things. I I always like economic incentives myself, no, being a conservative. Totally, it and works. It totally yeah, works. Yeah, the wow. marketplace will drive people to, uh, oh, okay, you know, if there's an incentive to do it properly. Hmm. Um, but I guess, and I just want to re- revisit this, how do we answer the faddishness question? What's the best way to do that? Well, I think what it is is really our responsibility is to teach all of the students. We can choose and pick which ones we want and which ones we don't. And I don't think we need a mandate for that. All of us who became educators became educators for that reason. And so, um, you know, I don't mind being responsible and accountable. I just want the tools to be able to do it. Well, I guess it's because it's the political environment you work in. It's a public school. You're sure. publicly funded. So I think that's where this comes from is that, you know, the, again, the, the, the emotional bank account, I like to call it the trust level, that, okay, I, I don't mind paying my taxes if I'm getting something that's of value to my community and my children and so forth. But they just don't, it doesn't seem to translate. We have that kind of a disconnect. And, I don't, and I'm not saying we have it with Florence Unified. Please don't misunderstand. I'm just saying in general, you know, you hear the, the, the complaints. Um, so that's why I asked that question about, you know, well, in 2004, we had No Child Left Behind, and now we're Common Core, and then we had AIM. And, you know, when is it going to stop? Right. Or is it going to stop? No, it's not. Well, and I think the, the politicians, if I may be very respectful, because, you know, I do like him kind of should stay out of this one um, only because just let us do our job and educate all of the kids for the best of our community and eventually our country and eventually the world mm-hmm. um, this is not just about us now we I, you know that I live in this community this is my home and I want safety if we don't do it now it will not be safe I actually want economic growth if we don't educate our students who's gonna pay our retirement Right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, so there are many, many. I can go on and on and on. Tell you all the benefits of education. I want them all. I think everybody b- agrees on the benefits. I think it's just how to get there and how to measure exactly. it. And that's that's been the argument for thirty years now. Right. And so I, you know, I think TV's a huge, oh. huge negative for education. It's a huge distraction. Well, and you know that and video games for young men, I think are terrible. Um, you know, I I don't know. If I can't change it, obviously, but. If you want a smarter kid, get them away from the TV. I can guarantee everybody listening out there, that will help your children. Um, we only have a couple minutes left. Did you have a... Yeah, I'd like to get these last couple of questions Jeez, in. He's fire away. Um, first question was, um, apparently Bill Gates has uh, donated a lot to this Common Core program. Does anybody know if Bill Gates is going to be donating more computers or more money to the, to the program? Probably well, not. I can tell you that it, this is a huge problem because, like, for example, Mesa who is one of the largest districts in Arizona, they're not ready for the parks because they don't have the technology they need. So he would have to donate millions of dollars just to Mesa wow. for the kids to be able to take this test. And now the other question that I would add is, do we have money, does the government have money to sustain that, the sustainability of parks for how many years? And that's a question that I don't have an answer for, but it's scary because it's very expensive. But uh, try ignorance, how much exp- yeah. more expensive that is. There you go. And then the other question was, if we can't uh, track a tried and true test of Common Core, how do we know that it works? Correct. And that's what I said. For my purposes, I don't care if it's ACT or part, we need to, we need to have an assessment to be sure that we are teaching it right and that the kids are learning correctly. So for my purposes, it doesn't really matter what test we have. We do need, we do need a test. Anything else, Joe? From no, the we're good right now. Okay. Uh, let's wrap up. Uh, Chris, would you like to give us a few final words from Florence, uh, the, your perspective at Florence High School? Oh, it's a, it's a, the last five years has been awesome for me, and uh, we have great kids at our school, and, you know, uh, people like to bag on, on public education. I've been in six schools in 22 years, and, and uh, I've enjoyed every place I've been. Um, I think that uh, our education system, uh, some places you take a test at eighth grade, which will determine what path you go on for the rest of your life. Like in Germany? Yeah. Here, um, our kids, um, if they're struggling as a freshman, I see many of them walk across the stage as seniors, go on to four-year universities. I mean, our main goal is to try and challenge every kid and try to build confidence. And, you know, I was talking to your dad earlier here about uh, the military and how some kids just aren't ready to move on to a four-year university and they may not be ready to move into a CTE field but the military has uh, we have a lot of kids that 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 struggle that that move that go that military route and, and uh, 
I, I think it's an excellent system for our kids. Thank you for that. I know Dr. Fuller's uh, son is in the Navy. He's active right. duty, and you said nuclear technology? Nuclear engineer. So he's going to be ending up running those uranium piles on the submarines or something at some something point. Something like that, yes. Well, well, good for him, and God bless him. Um, uh, what would you like to wrap up and let our audience uh, take away from our hour today? I just want to thank you, number one, for being so kind and inviting us, and thank you, Joe and Joe Sr., um, I want you to know that I'm very proud of Chris Knudsen and Tony Jimenez. They're wonderful leaders and do walk the walk. At Florence Unified School District, kids do come first, and so do teachers and faculty and staff. I want you to know that the quality of education we have is high, and we will continue doing that. But we need your help. We need your support. So my new logo is United for Kids because they are our future and uh, they're the future of our country they're the next leaders so you can you can think of where you want to spend your money you know we can go to the prison system which whether we like it's, it or not we have to we have 11 of them in florence full of people who didn't get educated we do or yeah. we can do the prevention way which is what we are trying to do so i want to thank you again and um hopefully we can count on you visiting us soon Sure, and, and we'll and you, we'll have you well, back. Uh, hopefully, you. both of you, and let's say in a year's time or so, or whenever it's appropriate, to uh, circle back on some of the questions we back and some of the questions we ask, and see what happens with uh, all these uh, issues. As education is a fluid thing, it, it's always changing, it's always evolving, and and uh, it's fun to, to have you folks both here Thank today because it's really been great to have you on. I really appreciate you taking the time. And I'm Douglas Wolf. And before we sign off, just want to run down a couple things. Remember Kids Day. Uh, the 27th at the YMCA, and then golf tomorrow. There's two spots left for uh, foursomes for golf, so call right now. And it's the Copper Basin Y, and I know, Joe, you're not a golfer, but uh, you'd look good out there like Chevy Chase and Caddyshack. Oh, you know, you'd, you, could, you could hit the links like that. And then Saturday, the event at Maricopa Unified School District with Anthony Smith. I will be there. And then next Saturday, Lincoln Day dinner. I'll be your MC for the uh, Republican fundraiser, Lincoln Day, and uh, the Sheriff Paul will be speaking, Lando Voiles. And uh, don't forget, RadiantBarrier.com. Cool your house down this summer. I'm Douglas Wolf, your host. Your county assessor, God bless you, God bless America, and God bless Pinal County. Thanks, Joe. You know what? I had the wrong thing queued up here because I was so enthralled by your speaking. So now I've got to go ahead and queue up your outro and make it happen. All right, let's, uh, let's head out for the day, right? Right, here we go. Listen, watch, chat, and interact. Become part of the Ponal Power Players Show every Wednesday, 11 a.m. to noon. Join me, your host, Douglas Wolf, right here on KQCK Radio. Engine parts aren't the only things that wear out over time. Bending or reaching can